Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to talk about the acid dissociation constant, also known as Ka. We're going to start by recapping what we mean or understand by strong and weak acids. We're then going to introduce this concept of the acid dissociation constant Ka. We're going to look at its counterpart or the, the opposite kind of thing for bases called the base dissociation constant Kb. We're going to look at the Ka expression thinking about how it connects with an equilibrium and look at some examples and we'll see how Ka um, helps to connect to acid strength. So what do we mean by strong and weak acids? Well we know that acids can be classified as either strong or weak. Um, a strong acid will fully dissociate or fully ionize in water. A weak acid will only partially ionize or dissociate in water. Um, now remember that for something to be strong, it has to be completely strong, 100% dissociation, um, but there can be various degrees of weak um, weakness when we're thinking about acids. So for example, HCl is a strong acid, 100% ionization, whereas citric acid um, only 8.6% ionizes, acetic acid only 1.3% ionizes. Okay, so the first one is a strong acid, the other two are weak acids. And we can see by looking at these figures that acetic acid is the weaker of those two because less of it is ionized or dissociated. So we're saying that weak acids, are in, in forming this, they form an equilibrium. They're in equilibrium with their conjugate base. We've, we've looked at lowry bronsted acid base reactions before, seeing that we have this, if this is our acid, then A minus is its conjugate base, and they're in equilibrium with each other, which means that we can use the logic we've looked at in the past about an equilibrium constant that helps to describe how much of each of those we would have at equilibrium. Okay, for this, you know, well, we've used K before, looking at KC or KSP, those sorts of things. We now talk about KA, A for acid. We've also got KB for base, looking at ba weak bases that are in equilibrium as well. Okay, so the KA expression, the equilibrium expression looks like this. Our products over reactants. Okay, so we've got A minus and our H3O plus over HA and H2O. But hopefully that last bit raises a, rings a bell for you that remembering that in equilibrium expressions that we almost always ignore water because its concentration is effectively one. That is, it, it, it is so, any change up or down is so small compared with the amount of water that's around it. So we can remove it from the expression and make things simpler for ourselves. Okay, so that Ka expression, that, equ that equation we can simplify. Okay, so we're just going from HA to A minus and H plus. Now we know that H plus is not the thing that really exists in solution, it's H3O plus, but we've simplified our expression so we can simplify this too. Okay, so therefore our Ka expression becomes this, where we've got A minus and H plus over HA. So this is the generalized form of the Ka expression, you know, where HA is, is some example of weak acid. I'm going to show you how that looks for a particular example now. Okay, so let's talk about acetic acid. Okay, so it's dissociation here. We've got this equation going from acetic acid to the acetate ion. Okay, if we're going to simplify this equation like we were just talking about before, then this is what we see. Okay, so we're forming acetate and then H+. So our Ka expression looks like this. Okay, where we've got the acetate ion and the H plus concentration on top and acetic acid concentration on the bottom. Now, we can look at this same sort of logic for weak bases as well. Okay, same behavior, same rationale, same um, mathematics. Okay, so for Kb, the base dissociation constant, like for ammonia, NH3. Okay, so the ionization of ammonia, we get the NH4 plus ion and the hydroxide ion. Okay, so we can simplify by removing the water at the same as we did before. So what we see for our Kb expression looks like this. Products over reactants. Okay, so we can see the hydroxide ion is in that expression, just like the H plus ion was before. Okay, so um, both of these are very useful for us to be able to determine, you know, um, aspects of those equilibrium. Okay, now one of the things that we know is that um, where you can have a strong acid or you can have acids with a degree of weakness, you know, you know some being weaker or stronger than others. The dissociation of a weak acid you know, this is our general kind of equation that we see, okay? And so this is our Ka expression. Now, if we just look at this as a general form, if the equilibrium up here lies to the right-hand side, the product side, the numerator here is going to be larger than the denominator. 
that is more products than reactants. So our Ka is going to be greater than one. Whereas if our equilibrium lies to the left, that is we've mostly just got undissociated HA, then our denominator is larger than our numerator and so our Ka will be less than one. Okay, so we can see that you know, at, at, at a value of one, we have this tipping point of, do we have more products or more reactants um, at present in that equilibrium? And so the, the size of the number that we get tells us a lot about that equilibrium and what, therefore, that the strength of the acid is like. The more dissociated or ionized the acid is, the stronger it is, the larger its Ka will be. The less dissociated or ionized it is, the weaker it is, therefore, the smaller its Ka value in proportion. Okay, so for example, acetic acid has a Ka of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, whereas for the carbonic acid is 4.4 times 10 to the minus 7. So the, because this Ka value is larger, that means it is a stronger acid than a carbonic acid. Okay, or we could flip that around and say carbonic acid is weaker than acetic acid. Um, and we can quantify exactly how much weaker if we really wanted to. Okay, so if we look at a, a range of Ka values for a range of acids, we can see that the, the top three that we've got here are strong acids. We have very large Ka values, but we also get a, a um, we also, then they're not all equal either. Okay, so we're saying that hydrochloric acid is the strongest of these three acids. Um, and, but then we get to our weak acids and we can see that we progress down the scale from hydrochloric acid all the way down to the hydrogen carbonate ion being the weakest of the acids in this particular set. Obviously there's lots more acids than we're talking about here, but you can see that the size of the Ka value tells us, gives us meaningful information. So we looked at what we mean by strong and weak acids, looking at this idea of fully or only partially ionizing or dissociating. We're seeing that because they weak acids establish an equilibrium, that there's a constant that can go with that. We call Ka, or the acid dissociation constant. We see that weak bases do the same behavior, so they can have their own constant called Kb. Um, and we see that like any other K expression that we can we can write one for these ones where we're looking about our acid dissociation and we see some examples of how we can do that. And then linking this idea of the size of Ka with the strength of an acid. The larger the Ka, the stronger the acid. Alright, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.